Hi, my name is Lucy Keats and I am a case manager with the Criminal Cases Unit and I determine defendants' cost order claims. Now, claims for costs and following a defendant's cost order are determined by case managers, senior case workers and case workers, dependent upon the value of the claim and its complexity. At present in the team, we have 18 members that assess these claims. And on average, we receive approximately 300 DCO fast track claims and about 50 DCO2 claims per month. As you know, they're determined under Regulation 7 of the Costs in Criminal Cases General Regulations 1986, and they are paid from the Central Fund. These regulations were amended by the Legal Age Sentencing and Punishment of Offenders Act in October 2012. And under that regulations, the rates and scales to be allowed on determination, both in relation to litigator and advocates fees, were set by the Lord Chancellor and are capped at legal aid rates. Those rates can be enhanced for solicitors under specific criteria and uplifted by a maximum of 100%. And for council's fees, the rates can be exceeded where the fixed fee would not provide reasonable remuneration. All claims are assessed on their merits and we take into account any representations that you may wish to make in support of your claim. That said, however, reasonable remuneration remains interpreted as if the determination is being conducted under the legal aid regulations. Hi, my name is Mike Allen. I work for the Criminal Cases Unit as a caseworker and I have done for the last six years. I'm here today to tell you about the claim forms. There are two types of claim forms. The DCO1, which is the fast track, where claims um, and the order is granted in the magistrate court and profit costs and council fees are under £2,000. DCO2 claims are Crown Court costs, appeal and committals and where costs claimed in the magistrate's court are over £2,000. The digital claim forms are available from the CCU website along with detailed guidance on their completion. A new form must be downloaded for each claim to avoid data you enter being corrupted. The digital claim form is mandatory and claims will be rejected if they are not submitted on or not submitted on our claim form as a PDF document or scan copy. If you or your client needs assistance with completing the forms, get in touch. Right now to talk about the fast track claim form, DCO1. Fast track claims were introduced to enable smaller claims to be submitted and determined without the need for the claimants to provide all their case papers. Only magistrate courts claim where the total is below £2,000 comprising of profit costs plus council fees uh, qualify as a fast track. These must be submitted on a DCO1 form and accompanied by the following. The defence cost order, client care letter, which is evidence of a private retainer, council fee note and work log, invoice receipts for any disbursements over £20. The claim form sets out the documents that must be included with your claim. As limited documentation is submitted with your claim, it is vital that you complete the relevant supporting information section. Please can complete this section with any and all information you wish for us to consider. If it's not fully completed, it may result in your claim being reduced if the assessor is not satisfied that the cost claim have been reasonably incurred, or if they are unable to properly assess your claim uh, being rejected. Moving on to non-fast track claims, which are submitted on the DCO2 claim form. This is for claims where your profit costs plus council's fees are over £2,000, where costs have been incurred in the Crown Court and where costs are claimed for an appeal in the Crown Court, either against conviction or sentence. As well as the mandatory documents set out on the claim form, you should include any information that you wish to be considered by the case manager 
in particular provide reasons why the case was prepared or conducted by a grade A fee owner and if, if applicable why a KC was instructed. Whilst the defendant may instruct a solicitor or counsel of his choosing, where that choice incurs additional costs, they must be reasonably incurred. For example, if you're not local to either the court or the defendant and have incurred additional travel time and expenses, they won't be allowed unless they can be seen to be justified and found to be reasonable. It's that sort of further information that you will need to supply in support of your claim. Submitting papers. Wherever possible, your papers should be submitted with your claim as a separate email attachment. You can attach up to 10 megabytes per email and we are happy for you to submit your papers attached to a series of emails. Each email should be headed with the defendant's full name. Please name each attachment appropriately. For example, DCO, client care letter, correspondence file. If there are a number of documents files that are the same, please name separately. Example, correspondence file one. Where it's not possible to send documents via email, you should, you should submit your claim form as usual and request access and guidance to uploading documents to the secure file exchange. It is important try, to try and replicate the structure of a paper file. You should number or upload files in chronological order and give them meaningful titles. Papers cannot be viewed via Mimecast, uh, Dropbox or submitted via disk, USB or hard drive or any other web-based platform. In exceptional circumstances, we will accept hard copies of papers via post or DX. Before sending, please contact us to discuss this. Uh, as this may cause a delay to the assessment of your claim as case managers are based remotely across the country. So what should you include on your claim form? Your claim form should describe the work you've undertaken, including any documents that were considered and drafted and who was attended. For example, attendance on the defendant, attendance on witness and counsel, um, skeleton argument prepared by counsel considered. To just enter preparation or consideration of documents isn't sufficient and may result in your claim form being sent back. I'll now go through the main reasons why a claim may be rejected. The main one is not submitted on a digital claim form. The digital claim forms, as we've said, are mandatory and are available on the CCU website. Your claim has been submitted on the wrong form, so costs under £2,000 submitted on a DCO2 or over £2,000 submitted on a fast track cut form. Or they've been submitted on a scanned copy of a digital form. It must be a newly downloaded fresh form for each claim. The form itself is incomplete. The declaration hasn't been de completed. The declaration, whilst it's a yes and no box, is the equivalent to the box on the old paper forms that you would need to sign. You're signing to say that the information contained within that form is correct and accurate to the best of your knowledge, and this must be completed. No indication has been given as to whether London rates have been claimed. There's the warrant or summons date is missing. Details of the fee earners who've undertaken the work are missing. And as I said above, there's no detail of the work carried out provided. The defendant's name and address does not match the court order. We do appreciate that at times the court order may have a different address to the defendant that was on the claim form. Primarily, this is due to the defendant moving address. That's an opportunity to use the relevant information box. Just tell us why the, the address is different and that should prevent your claim form being returned. Mandatory documents not included. Again, 
these documents are mandatory and they must be provided in support of each claim. The defendant's costs order is incomplete, in particular in relation to magistrates' courts, page two of the DCO, which includes details of the offences, must be provided. If you have problems getting this from the court, please just include a copy of the court memo and tell us why you haven't included page two, and that may well be sufficient. The time claimed is not in decimal format. The forms are designed for all time to be entered in a decimal format. If it's not, it may affect the actual costs that you get back. That may They may be incorrect. The claimant is not an individual. Various provisions of the 1985 Act under which the DCOs are made prevent the order from extending to legal costs where the defendant is not an individual. A DCO made in favour of a company is therefore ultra-virus. And in relation to Crown Court costs, there is no notice of legal aid being refused on the basis of means. It's not sufficient to say that no application was made because the defendant would not have been granted legal aid. We must have a copy of the legal aid certificate. 